about 10 years ago, I remember the very first time I met Jerry Cohen, uh, we started talking about rule of law. And I said to him at the time, what strikes me about this topic is, other than the one occasion I can think of, and there may be others, but I can only think of one, other than the occasion when Paul Gewurz was in the State Department and Bill Clinton was president, that this topic, in my view, has never gotten the attention it deserves at the most senior level of government-to-government uh, -government discussions. It's been treated, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as too much like a kind of technical topic that is dealt with by technicians and not as a fundamental uh, topic between relations of, of the two states. Uh, and in my own experience, I always say that the Chinese leadership, their most distinctive characteristic to me is that they are uh, systematically open. That is to say that their basic modus operandi is on any particular topic, let's look throughout the world, get the best ideas throughout the world, bring them back, study them, and then customize them as appropriate for our own system. And yet, in this one respect, uh, they've been, as far as I'm concerned, a little bit slow. So we had that conversation 10 years ago. Now, John Huntsman asked about what's going to happen uh, after the 18th Party Congress. So I'll stick my neck out and I'll say, for a variety of reasons, some of which are circumstantial and some of which are to do with the particular leadership in, in the, in the uh, seven-person the seven standing committee, uh, I believe that, that this topic will have to become a more important topic, and that it will have to be treated, as all things in China are, top-down, in addition to what Bill said earlier, that uh, let's let a thousand flowers bloom uh, and interact in all kinds of ways. But the truth is, the fundamental is not going to change unless there's a top-down decision to change it. So in, in addition to that, I remember having a conversation with one of the seven, one of the current seven, uh, just about uh, two years ago, in which he made the following remark. One of the problems with American politicians is they think that in China, we can do whatever we want to do. The truth is, increasingly, we have to be responsive to the people. And that's increasingly so for all kinds of reasons, including the fact that uh, social media is making, it is making it so. And so the truth is, the senior leadership in China keeps very close tabs on what's going on among the ordinary people. And to the extent that the ordinary people are increasingly uh, having to have their own grievances adjudicated in some uh, more systematic fashion and want to see their rights, their rights uh, observed and so on, this will create a kind of implicit pressure, which in my view will, among other reasons, lead the top leadership to have to deal with this thing much more directly. And so if that theory of the case is correct, then I would say, to extend the analogy, it will be absolutely essential that there are some number of very senior people who are engaging with the very senior Chinese on these topics over an extended period of time, recognizing that uh, the contribution of outsiders in the end can only be modest. Uh, it, can be, it can be profound in, in its uh, lending of ideas and of thinking, but modest in, uh, in what, actually, what actually happens. And then I don't finally say that uh, my experience also tells me that the Chinese leadership, they don't need help on the concepts. The conceptual understanding they have down just fine. <clears throat> what they need is extremely practical, concrete advice. If we want to go from here to there, how do we get there? Give me very specific steps to take and give me a sequence of those steps. And what exactly would you do? And in the absence of that kind of advice, uh, typically it's a kind of wasted conversation. <laughs>